Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This lesson will cover XML schema. While document type declarations, or DTDs, can be sufficient for describing very simple text document types, databases may need to validate their content in a matter that is beyond a DTD's capability. So what we'll look at in this lesson is the idea of an XML schema, which is a different way of describing an XML document type's proper contents. We'll take a look at how it compares with DTDs in terms of its capabilities. And we'll do that by taking a look at an example. XML schema allows for both the content and the structure of the document to be written in XML syntax and also provides for more specific descriptions of element content. So let's start by taking a look at what a schema is. The word schema comes from the world of databases. When we're building a database, we want to be very careful in describing what the proper structure of each database record is. So we talk about the records, and we want to know which fields are in the records, and we want to know what the valid content of each field is. So that if there's some sort of error in the entry of information in a database, we can catch it as soon as possible before it louses up processing somewhere further down the line. So a XML schema is based around this idea of giving very precise descriptions of the proper content of different parts of our XML file. Now let's take a look at the advantages of using a schema over a DTD. The schema, as we'll see, are written in XML syntax. When you have a DTD whose syntax is borrowed from a predecessor language of XML, during an era when it was popular to kind of create different syntaxes for different parts of a file, we have to create a sub-portion of our program, our XML processor, that's going to deal with that syntax before we get back to dealing with our corner brackets and element names and that sort of thing. By creating schema in XML, it allows us for ease of programming. Our XML processor can use namespaces to distinguish our XML document content from our schema content. And that way, our XML processor processing the corner brackets and the element names and everything else can just do double duty and handle everything. Also, schema are designed so that you can describe the types of content that are allowable in an element in a little bit more detail than a DTD allows you to. To see this in action, let's take a look at an example. You'll find a file called message.xml, and it's simply a file similar to other message type documents that we've used in this course. It's got some pretty basic content, but just for purposes of illustrating the power of schema, we've included a date element, and we've made sure that our sig element is something that points to some external file that could contains some sort of signature, such as a V card or an H card or something like that. There are two ways of describing how this document is structured. The one we've seen before is using a document type definition. And there's a file called messagedef.dtd, which describes this in the way that a DTD can. We declare an element called message. We say that it has an optional date element. Then it has from, to, and message text, and then an optional sig element. And then each of these elements has its own content declared. However, they're all declared just about the same way with PC data. If you looked at our XML structure lesson, you'll know that PC data stands for parsed character data. It means that the only way we have of describing the content of the, this element is that it's text but the XML processor should look through that text to make sure there aren't any extra elements within the text. But that's all it's going to do. We can't specify that it has to be a number. We can't specify that it has to be a date. We can't specify any particular format. Our SIG file is reached through our SIG element, which we're declaring as empty. And then we declare an attribute list for SIG, and we say that it has a loc attribute. And that's where we're going to put our URI that points to our signature file, but I can't describe it as a URI without jumping through a lot of hoops. The easiest way to declare it is to say that it's character data. Don't look for XML tags in it, but beyond that, it's just text. If somebody enters something other than the location of a signature file in there, there's not much I can do about it before my XML processor crashes on the fact that it's not a URI. 
So the other way of describing it is using a schema. And here is a file called messageschema.xsd. And we see right away that it's in XML format. It uses XML syntax, not DTD syntax. So our root element is schema. We see that it's prefixed with XS. And so we have this namespace declaration specifying that anything prefaced with XS is going to be part of the XML schema namespace. So these are all XML schema elements. So the way we describe content in schema is we use an element called element. And then we use an attribute called name to describe what it is. So here we're declaring an element called elements. And if we go back to our XML file, we see that that's our root level element right here that contains everything else. Within that element, we describe it as what's known as a complex type. A simple type would be just a basic text element. A complex type means that it contains a mixture or it contains a number of other elements or content in a particular sequence. In this case, it's a sequence, so we're using the schema element called sequence. And then each of our simpler elements is declared in here with another element element. So we've got our date, we've got our from, we've got our to, we've got our message text, and we've got our sig. The key difference with a schema is that I can specify the content to a higher degree of accuracy. For example, in date, I have a type attribute. And its value is excess date. If there are particular values that are part of your XML document type, you can use namespaces to describe them. You can use namespaces for attributes. You can use them for element names. You can use them for attribute values. So there is a specific XML schema date format, which is one of several date and time formats available in XML schema. And the standard date is the year followed by the month followed by the day. So right away, if I'm using a program that will validate my XML content against a schema and anything that's been declared as a date format doesn't follow that format, then I can catch it fairly early on in processing and throw an error, and that way it doesn't louse up anything further down the line. My from, to, and message text elements are all declared as string, which basically just means they're text. There are a variety of other of text-like contents that you can have, but string is a basic data for any type of text. And then the type for my SIG file is that it's any URI, any URI element. So I'm specifying that it is a location as opposed to uh, just any random bit of text or character data. So the question is, how do I go about using a schema as opposed to a DTD to describe my document? With a schema in place, we have a more detailed data model against which to validate an instance of a particular data type. And so we have um, a couple of files we can look at here. Here is another version of our message file called DTD message. And it specifies what we've seen before, how we declare a document and use an existing DTD. We use a doc type declaration. We say that it's a message to match our root level element. And in this case, I'm using a system identifier. And if I have my DTD document in the same folder, I can just use a very simple uh, URI reference to where that, uh, where that DTD is located. So this is what we've seen before. Let's take a look at how it's done with a schema. You'll notice there's no doc type declaration. A doc type declaration assumes that there is a DTD. So if you say doc type, it's going to start looking for a DTD. And if you don't have one, you could run into problems. So instead what I do is I have my root level element here. 
I use a namespace attribute to declare whatever namespace my document is in. In this case, it's my custom message element document type. And then I use another namespace attribute with the prefix SS XSI. And that declares another namespace that's been predefined by the World Wide Web Consortium to describe when I'm using a particular instance of a database schema. And then I can immediately use, since I've declared this namespace prefix, I can immediately use it for the schema location attribute of this element and describe the location of my XSD file. And then if I'm working again with a uh, with a document type or a program that uh, that validates my content against a schema, then it will have no problem with all this content. So in this lesson, we've learned that schema can be handy because since they're already in XML format and we already have an XSL, XML processor in place, they're easier to program for. We've learned that they allow for more specific data types so that if we're in an important validating situation, it gives us a lot more power in that area. And that allows us to work in a more robust environment for database creation. Thank you for visiting educator.com.